So, wanna make a slick tooltip in Godot that even fades in when you hover something and shows multi-line info, maybe with some inline images or bold and colored characters? For example, in the game I'm currently working on, an idle game about stars and constellations called Lightem, I've got this skill tree that adds an RPG-ish component, and in this skill tree, every skill button can be hovered to see what skill it grants exactly, thanks to a little tooltip. Oh, and by the way, if you're curious about Lightem, you can wishlist it on Steam, and there's a free demo available. Okay, so how exactly can you create this kind of tooltip? Well, first, you should probably create a panel container node in your scene that you style like you want. A common type of tooltip will be with a dark but slightly transparent background and maybe some borders. Also, be sure to add some margins around your content, and for the content itself, it can be cool to use a rich text label node. Because this boosted label type allows you to include special BB codes to set per character styling. Typically, this will let you make some of your words bold or colored, and you can even directly include images by referencing their paths in your project. Also, remember to toggle on this fit content option so that the label actually resizes depending on the length of your text. Then, don't forget to select both your panel and your label node, and turn off their mouse filter option by setting it to ignore. This way, they won't block mouse events, and you'll be able to stick this tooltip to your cursor without weird on and off glitching. And on that topic, it's time to see how to actually show and hide the tooltip when we hover the element we want to detail and have it follow the mouse. So first, let's give our tooltip container a new script that sticks it to the cursor position globally and automatically. Of course, if you've got a special cursor like I've done here, you may want to give it a little extra offset to give your UI some room and actually be able to see your content. Then you can even boost it further by giving it a special function to show or hide the tooltip with a little opacity fade. This will instantly give a more professional look to your game. So here in the function, the on parameter that you pass in will tell Godot if you want to show or hide the tooltip, and for the fade, I'm using a simple twin object. If you're curious about that concept of twins, I've actually made a whole condensed tutorial dedicated to that topic. So feel free to have a look after you finish this video, of course. But anyway. Last but not least, you need to call this toggle function when your mouse enters or exits the zone of the element that you want to link your tooltip to. Here, I'm going to assume that the element that you want to detail with a tooltip is a control node, so it's something from your interface. Otherwise, you'd need to find other ways of catching the mouse enter and mouse exit events, usually with area 2D or area 3D nodes. Okay, but so let's say that this is about the interface. If you just want one element in your UI to have a tooltip in your game, let's say here this population button, then a quick and easy way to create this link is to simply connect the mouse entered and mouse exited signals of your UI node to the toggle function of the tooltip. But if you try to pick the function directly on the tooltip node, you'll notice that since it expects an extra on parameter, it is not shown in the list. And so you'll want to list even the methods with a non-matching prototype, and then select your toggle function, activate the advanced mode to be able to bind extra parameters, and finally add a boolean parameter with the proper value. So when the mouse enters, you want to call it with the true value, and when the mouse exits, you want to call the toggle function with the false value. Again, if you want to learn more about signal callbacks and parameter binding, don't hesitate to check out this other tutorial I made previously. Okay, now, on the other hand, if you want to reuse this system of tooltip multiple times in your game, for example here for every button in my column, then the best way is to use a script. Of course, here be sure to first disconnect the mouse entered and mouse exited callbacks that we just put on our element for the previous tests, otherwise there will be some collisions. 
So first, you should make sure that you put your tooltip hierarchy inside the elements that you want to interact with. We'll just say that whichever element wants to get details with a tooltip, it needs to have this tooltip container with its content as a child, and this child node should be named exactly tooltip. Also here, I'm using buttons, that are basic control nodes, that don't force anything about the position of the child node. But if you're using containers, then you'll notice that your tooltip can follow your mouse anymore because it is stuck to its container parent. So to avoid this, make sure that you switch on the top level mode on your tooltip so that it always moves regardless of its current hierarchy relative to the global screen reference. And obviously in that case, you'll probably want to turn your tooltip into a prefab, which you can do by doing a right click on it and saving it as a new scene in your project. Alright, now let's create a script on the parent element that you call something like tooltip interact, for example, and in this script we'll just do the same as we just did in the editor, meaning that we'll link the mouse entered and mouse exited signals of our element to the toggle function of its tooltip child element with the proper value for the on parameter. The cool thing with putting this in a script is that now, if we have several elements that each need to have their own tooltip, it's super easy to just drag and drop the script on these nodes, adjust a bit the content of the tooltip, and get all the proper logic trigger instantly. And so, that's it! You've now got a tooltip system that toggles when needed, supports style text, fades in and out, and follows the mouse automatically. As usual, I really hope you liked this quick tip, don't hesitate to react in the comments, and subscribe to the channel to get more videos. And of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon members for the support, and to you for watching. And as always, take care.